the spirit of gospel, but that car's so big, I smell that. Yeah, I, I smell that. I know, girl, that's what I told her. I said I wouldn't be caught dead dressed in a skirt like that, not even for a funeral. I know, she's like, I got it in clearance. I was like, it doesn't look that bad. For roadkill. <laughs> yeah, honestly, sister, it doesn't look half bad. It looks all bad. <laughs> yeah, you're I, welcome. I, I wanted to say, words can't describe how bad your outfit is, so I'll just throw up instead. <laughs> she said, I'm making a fashion statement. I said, yeah, it says, I have no taste. <laughs> I told her, I told her, I said, I used to have a skirt like that, too. After the dog threw up on it. <laughs> Carol, sweetie, I mean, you don't need a garment bag. You need a garbage bag. <laughs> Here, sweetie, hold this. Another thing. I mean, the girl has a personality of a box of rocks. I told Blaze, I can't believe he liked her. The girl's about as interesting as a documentary on dirt. I'm completely <laughs> repulsed Put it by in your hands. Disgusting oh, human. Alive all over it. <laughs> oh, come on, girls. It was a joke. Look it. Come on in. I'll make you some coffee. Okay, nah, never mind. We're going to have Christine's coffee. Okay. Suit yourself. What time is it? Ah. Tony should be getting up soon. Look it. You girls stay with Christine a while. I'm going to go and keep the doors locked for a little bit. Why? Never mind. Chris! In here, girls. Hey, we're here for some of that delicious coffee of yours. And to get away from that disgusting father of ours. Oh, yeah, sure, girls. Help yourselves. Is everything okay? Yeah, you kind of seem like there's something wrong. Are you upset because Gordon gets back today? No, no. Well, it has something to do with that, but it's not Gordon. He took Blaze and Fernie up to the mountains, didn't he? Yes, and they're supposed to be back this morning. So what's the problem? Oh, girls, I have a huge problem. My Uncle Clarence is in town. Uncle Clarence? Is he the one that got run over by a team of hogs? That's the one. Oh, gosh. And the one that tried to get you to leave Gordon because he said you could do so much better? The same. Oh, gosh. Also, isn't he the one that came near to burning your house down last time he came because he brought the grill inside? Into the house. Oh, gosh. Lauren, please. Sorry. Oh, what am I going to do, girls? When Gordon finds out, he's going to flip. They hate each other. Well, when is Uncle Clarence supposed to get here? Uncle Clarence is already here. Oh, oh gosh. gosh. That's a nice bathroom you got there, Chris. Whoa. <laughs> Who are these two beauties? Uncle Clarence, you remember the Gribble sisters from across the street? Joe Gribble's daughters? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Say, you all could pass for the Wrigley twins. You know, the commercial? Or was it Juicy Fruit? Uncle Clarence, I've made some breakfast. Why don't you have a seat? Oh, well, yes. Hey, uh, if you want to know the secret passage to my heart, it's through my appetite. That's nice. Back to that bathroom of yours, Chris. That's an awful nice tile we got there. Thanks. Yes, sirree, Bob. <laughs> you know, I recently put carpet in my bathroom. Really? Carpet? You had better believe it, and I love that carpet so much in my bathroom that I plan on carpeting it all the way up to my house. 
Yikes. By the way, where's that broken down husband of yours? Why wasn't he here to welcome me? Well, Uncle Clarence, nobody knew you were coming, and Gordon's been up in the mountains. Well, I certainly hope that Christine has breakfast ready because I'm starving. I hear you. You're welcome to join us. No thanks, I have a breakfast day at the Bluebird. You wanna know what I'm gonna get? What? Only the Friday morning special, six fried eggs, 10 strips of bacon, one pound of hamburger meat with two tomatoes and two onions diced into it, 11 slices of cheese melted between the burger and the bacon, lettuce, avocado, five sausage links, green chilies, and an extra side of sour cream, along with my double chocolate malt, vanilla lava cake, salty french fries, and a Diet Coke. That is gonna lay on your chest. Well, they don't call it the quadruple bypass for nothing. Where are all my clothes, Joe? Somebody emptied out my closet, and I don't have a single thread of clothes. You're the only one on this street stupid enough to do that. Now where are my clothes? Go away, Carter! Good to be home, huh? Yeah, it's good to see that nothing's changed while we were away. Look, uh, I'll talk to Joe about his RV later. I'll be seeing him. Is Gordon Clarence coming? Oh gosh, girls, you've got to help me. What do we do? We've got to hide Uncle Clarence. You've got to come with us. Yeah, we want to show you something. Well, can I finish eating first? Bring the body with you. Yes, bring the food, the body, everything. I don't, I don't see what's so funny. I think you have to. to say it. Come on. Yeah, you think Chris gets back to us? Wait till you see the mask. Oh, I'm yeah. sure that's a sight to behold, but so are these eggs with the tamales. Hey, Chris. Gordon, what a surprise. It's not a surprise. I told you last night I was coming here this morning. Well, I thought maybe you would have slept in a little longer. Sue, so, how was your trip? Oh, it was horrible. Horrible? Fernie completely totaled Joe's RV. It was so bad we had to leave it up there. Oh, that's nice. No, no it's not. You want to know why? Because now I get to pay Joe's deductible. Because Fernie took out the entire back wall of his RV and was kind enough to do it in my car. Oh. Oh, that's too bad. I mean, uh, was our car damaged? No. Well, the headlights don't work because there's not any. The radiator is in the front seat. And the engine, I think, is still in Joe's RV. But aside from that, it's in mint condition, Chris. Oh, well, that's nice. Chris, what planet are you on? Oh, Gordon, I'm sorry. It's just been a really hectic morning. So now I get to talk with our insurance company, the infamous Flywheel Shyster and Flywheel, who wouldn't admit to having a belly button, let alone admit to being at fault in an accident. No towel. Incoming, girls! I'm sorry, so why do I just talk about insurance? It seems so random. It doesn't matter, Chris. It's apparent that I'm the only one in this house right now, so... Let me know what planet you're living on, and I'll come and visit you someday. Well, I mean, if you're gonna go crazy, better do it right, right? What's that smell? It smells... Do what? I smell straw? What? It's like an alfalfa, like a... like a farm-type smell. Uh, well, the landscapers were supposed to come? Maybe that's it. Hmm. Speaking of landscapers, I highly recommend Tony's new landscaper. Really? Any good? Uh, amazing. It's the only landscaper I've ever seen that can mow a lawn, drink a fifth of whiskey, and knock out not two, but three windows all at the same time. So, to top everything off, on the way home, Fernie thought that he was taking headache medicine when he was actually taking an oxycodone, which turned him into an oxymoron. And when I was trying to put him into bed so he could sleep it off, he decided he wanted to fight with me. And about broke my back trying to get him back into bed. The poor guy. But poor guy, I'm the one with the injured pocketbook, the injured back, and the injured car. Say so you look pale. Is something wrong? I don't feel too good, to be honest. Hmm. Sorry. 
Don't worry about Fernie. He's fine. He was actually singing the Star Spangled Banner in Pig Latin when I left him. So this has been one of those adventures that I'm just, I'm just glad to be home and, and, and have some nice, peaceful, quiet Clarence. Uncle Clarence, what are you doing here? Um, what Gordon means to say is, Uncle Clarence, how wonderful it is to see you. Uncle Clarence, what are you doing here? <sighs> see? He's just so happy to see you. He's speechless. Well, shake hands at least. Gordon, you don't, you know you don't look any better since when I saw you last, and you sure as heck don't look good back then. <laughs> I'm just joshing with you, boy. You know that, right? You can never take a joke now, could you? <laughs> oh, uh, don't bother about the sores on my hands there. I had that hand, foot, and mouth disease. But I'm beyond the contagious stages of it. Well, at least I think so anyways, but... <laughs> but you're shocked to see me here again, huh? <laughs> oh, by the way, Gordo, are you shrinking? I think uh, when I saw you last, when you got married, you were about six foot tall. Now you're about 4'11". Chris, what in the world are you doing to this poor man, huh? <laughs> well, I think it's time for round two. I hope you guys got enough food in this house because I'm going to be here until, well, at least until I leave now anyhow, huh? You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? <laughs> How on earth did you talk the zoo into allowing you to bring him home? Gordon, I know this is bad timing. Bad timing? Bad timing, Chris? When would be good timing? You will not allow him to stay. I will not allow him to stay. The health department will not allow him to stay. Gordon, Uncle Clarence has his good points. If you give him a chance, he can be really fun. Oh, like the fun and dysfunctional. Will you just leave this to me? Please? So Gordy, I see you got your little lady in the kitchen where she belongs. I'm surprised you ain't got her name on the doormat yet. Well see, if I'd known you were coming, I would have had your name on it. Don't take me off, Gordon. I'm in a lot better shape than we last met. Yes, if I remember correctly, weren't you suffering from mad cow disease? So what are you doing now, Uncle Clarence? <clears throat> I work for a boring company. We do oil wells, water wells, especially farms. I tell people, I don't mean to be such a bore, but that's what I do. Huh? <laughs> well, that's fine. Why don't you bore a hole in yourself and let all the sap run out? So, I was thinking maybe we could do something special, like grill tonight? Special? Special? Something special, Chris? What could be more special? As long as Uncle Clarence here is, no matter what we do, it's going to be special. Maybe this time he'll be successful in burning our entire house down. You're just as big of a stinker as you've always been, aren't you, Gordo? Don't look now, Uncle Clarence, but I think that there's one man too many in this room, and I think it's you. Gordon, please. Well, that went well. So Gordon, what, what is so bad about Uncle Clarence? I can't keep enough toilet paper in the house for one thing. <laughs> Wasn't he the one that got ran over by a team of hogs? It's the same. He survived, unfortunately, to wreak havoc on my sanity. The sanity of all mankind. Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. Please don't say that. Oh, okay. Sorry. What is that? That, my dears, is an accomplishment of nature. The nectar of the gods. A balm, if you will, for the body. One of the best things for you. It doesn't look very appetizing. It's not in the look, little one. It's in the quality that benefits. But what's it called? Well, it has many names. Some people call it kombucha. But I call it my wonder tea. <laughs> and I made this batch especially for this trip for my lovely little niece. 
and her precious little friends. And vertically challenged husband, of course. But I'm not going to mention all of his challenges because I'm only going to be here for two weeks and there's simply not enough time. <laughs> <laughs> you are in need of my wonder tea. Oh no, Uncle Clarence. I'm good. I will not take no for an answer. None of you know what you are missing until you try it. No, I don't think so. I've never drank glue or gasoline either, regardless of what I'm missing. I'll try it. You will? You all will. So Gordon, where is Uncle Clarence sleeping? I don't know. Too bad for him we got rid of the doghouse. Drink up, girls. Trust your Uncle Clarence. If this makes me sick, I'm blaming you. Oh my! Uncle Clarence, this is amazing. I'm shocked. This is actually really good. I forgive your apprehension and unbelief. You know, Blaze and Fernie and I, we found this, this beautiful cliff up in the mountains. A steep way down. Yeah. Maybe we could take Uncle Clarence up there. I'm sure it'd be a beautiful view on the way down. This stuff is so good. It should be bottled. Uncle Clarence, this stuff is great. Oh, my! Pardon me, girls, but this stuff is surprisingly... Oh! <laughs> now you're speaking my language, Chris. You will find it most illuminating. I simply cannot get enough of it. <laughs> I'm telling you, Gordon, if I were you, I would tell Christine that it's either him or me. Either he's out or I'm out. And then you can come over, crash on my couch. Oh, you so you assume I'd be the one that's out. Thank you. You need to stand up for yourself, Gordon. He's going to pounce on you the whole time he's here. I've got a few ideas of fighting back. He can stay, but he's going to be miserable the whole time he's here. I don't see what's so blessed funny. Bless tea next time. My glass can't tea. Christine, what is this? Are they drunk? Give me this. Whoa! Smell this! Oh! That, that stuff is hard! My wife is drunk. Gordon, my daughters are drunk. Home. 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 No. 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 Home. You start. No, no, she starts. She starts. Home. Home on the range. Where the deer and the antelope. antelope. Uncle Clarence, have you completely flipped your wig? Gordon, you can't blame this on me. I, I don't know what's going on. What's going on? They're gassed. That's what's going on. Well, I just gave them some of my wonder tea, and uh, it doesn't affect me that way. It doesn't affect you that way because you're already an alcoholic. You're used to it. You've got them lit up like a Christmas tree. <sighs> How do you set that remark? If we put a lighted wick in their mouth, they would burn for three days. It was an accident. I really didn't mean to. No. <laughs> I think it'll 
sober him up. No, that's a good idea. <laughs> Christine, do you think that you could get a hold of yourself, please? <laughs> Gordon Miller! Stop being so stuffy. Here, have some of this. It makes you feel like a million bucks. No, Chris. There's not much left. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, Gordon, you can't have any. <laughs> Families are drunk. Drunk. D R U N K. You know, we're Christians, message believers. We don't believe in that sort of thing, right? I know, Gordon. I feel terrible. I feel awful. You're a big help, you are. You're not dying, Christine. You're paying. Paying for what? For your ignorance. And for all the bad things you've said about me behind my back. And maybe even a few to my face. Oh, I feel like my head's gonna pop off. I'm so embarrassed. It's okay. You'll be fine. Are the girls okay? Well, Sabrina's still passed out, and Lauren is still in the bathroom throwing up. The time was had by all. I remember Joe laughing. Was he drunk too? Not any more than he usually is. <sighs> oh, Uncle Clarence, what are we going to do about him? Well, you could always poison his dinner tonight. You're horrible. But it is worth thinking about. <laughs> So this guy blamed the murder on his imaginary dog. The judge said that his attempt to make himself look insane wasn't working. So then he tried to stick the dog on the judge. <laughs> this story is made up, right? It was in the news. Well, it's more than likely made up. You know, I had an imaginary dog once when I was a kid. His name was Otis. What happened to him? He got hit by a car. <laughs> Serves him right though. Otis was an atheist. Sugar? I beg your pardon? Can you pass the sugar? Oh. Sure. Thank you. So, how is everybody's chicken? It's delicious, Lauren. Very good, sweetie. Very, very good. Man, all Uncle Clarence could say is... <laughs> Folks, I just thought a bad word. Of course you're forgiven. We all thought it in unison. That is absolutely the most disgusting thing I have ever witnessed firsthand. What is wrong with you? I think I want to step outside and get some fresh air. Uh, there's just not enough room in here for me and that. <laughs> Man, that was about a five on the Richter scale, huh? Gosh. That was off the charts, and so am I. Gordon, Gosh wait. Gracious. It's almost time for dessert. Hey. You ladies will find this interesting. I once had a lady friend in my life. Uncle Clarence, no. Oh, yes, I did. Well, do tell. Well, I met her on my sales calls at my boring company. <laughs> All I had to do was just, just, just give her my crest commercial smile like this. And she slammed the door in his face. Gordon. <clears throat> Go on, Uncle Clarence. 
Well, anyways, it was love at first sight. When she laid her eyes on me, she was like, man, I've been dreaming of this man all of my life. What does she eat before she goes to bed? Gordon. So Clarence, tell us about this boring company. I do boring work. Uh, so what brings you out this way? Well, I'm uh, driving my car out to my son, I mean to um, my friend in California. <sighs> it's his birthday. I figured I'd surprise him. Oh, how nice. Kind of like you surprised all of us. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. So back to my lady friend. This woman was panting after me. Something fierce. So I would have to either marry her or leave her. So... Yeah? So I left her. Oh! What are you thinking about? Oh, nothing. It's all just a blur at this point. Mm-hmm. What are you thinking about? I'm thinking about how people can change. How someone can almost become a whole other person altogether. Especially with Wonder Tea. <laughs> That's not what I mean. Who are you talking about? Uncle Clarence. What? He hasn't changed. He's still the same nutcase he's always been. No. I'm talking about long before you ever met him. When I was a little girl, he wasn't like he is now. I actually remember him being a very spiritual man. Very smart man. Clarence? Uncle, I only bathe in the month of May, whether I need it or not, Clarence? Yes, the same. <laughs> he actually taught our Sunday school. And he's always been a little quirky, a little goofy, but back then there was a seriousness to him, a reverence actually. Hmm. When did all this change? When his wife left him. Did he, um, did he ever have any kids? No, 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 no. I mean, he has always disappeared at random and showed up years later, but I think I would have heard if he had any kids. Why do you ask? Well, that's not important. All right. Wow. 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 That's great. Man. How many years have you been doing this? You know, I recently heard a story from Brother Branham that I've never heard before. He told the story of the man who painted the Last Supper. He said it took him 10 years. And you know, he said that the same man that posed for Christ 10 years later posed for Judas. 10 years, he said, of sin from a great opera singer went from Christ and came as low as Judas. And you know, Brother Brown said it doesn't take 10 years. It could happen in 10 minutes. Sin will change your character. Amen. The splendor i 
What are you doing there? Sorry, Gordon. I didn't mean to scare you. I didn't realize anybody would be up this late. It's fine. So, Uncle Clarence, how old is your son? Well, he's a... Uh... I knew you would caught that. I appreciate you not telling anyone, but uh, he'll be 21. Hmm, I see. Why haven't you told anyone that you have a son? I mean, that's, that's, something, that's something to be proud of. Mm, well, for some, but, but it, isn't, it isn't when your son isn't proud of you. You see, his, when he was born, his mother took him and uh, she left me, and she left me because I lost my job, and we were starting to lose everything, and uh, and I was so embarrassed that I, I didn't want to tell anyone about the boy, but we're, we're talking again, he and I, for the past few years now. Well, you're, you're taking him a new car for his birthday. I mean, sounds like things are good now. Yeah. So are you flying back? Well, actually, it's my car that I'm bringing him. Uh, his car broke down, and uh, he wants to take his girlfriend out of town for his birthday. So I thought that I would take him my car. and and. Uh, what are you going to drive? Oh, well, I'll see what can be done uh, with his car while he's gone. So you won't be with him for his birthday? He, uh, he doesn't want me to be. Um, I'm supposed to drop off the car while his girlfriend's at work, and he would rather not his girlfriend meet me. Uncle Clarence, you're driving several hundred miles to take your son, your car, because his broke down and he wants to go out for his birthday with his girlfriend and he's ashamed of you? It doesn't sound like this kid knows what he's got. Clarence, what does your son do? Well, he's been out of work for a while now. How does he make it? I, I send him an allowance every month. Uncle Clarence, you are just as crazy as we always thought you were. Just a totally different kind of crazy than what we realized. 
Well, I went so many years without being with him, you know? And I love him so much that I want to be in his life so much. I just... Clarence, you can't buy your son's love. I understand and I feel for you, but really all you have done is created a selfish monster that doesn't care anything for you except for what you can do for him. Oh yeah, he wants your money. He wants your car. But he wants you out of his life so that you don't get in the way while he goes and enjoys it. You know, that's what people do with God. They want his blessings. They want his healing. They want his financial blessings. But yet they don't want him to get in the way while they go out and do whatever they want to with it. God doesn't give his children everything that they want, but he does give them what they need. Clarence, I know that this is easier said than done, but if it was me, I'd go out there, go to your son, let him know that you're willing to help him in every way that you can. You're willing to help him with his car. You're willing to help him with a job to get up on his feet, but that the monthly is cut off. He'll never speak to me again. Any son that requires payment for his affection is not a son. Clarence, if you truly love your son, then you need to be the father that he needs you to be right now, not the one that he wants you to be. I know that it's not gonna be easy, but I'd be willing to help you in any way that I can. And I know that God is willing to help you if you ask him. Thank you. Gordon? Yeah? Would you, would you pray for me that God would give me wisdom about my son? Of course I will. Uncle Clarence, are you sure you won't stay a little longer? Shut up, Chris. Well, I actually have to be on my way. But thank you for the hospitality. And the food, of course. No problem. And sorry about the... Don't mention it. Please. And thank you, my friend. You're very welcome. Let us know how it goes. Oh, I will. What are y'all talking about? Well, I'll let Gordon tell you. Goodbye, sweetheart. Wow, what happened to you two? We just prayed about it. Miracles never cease around here. What were you supposed to tell me? They can wait. That was a very nice thing you did for Uncle Clarence. Isn't it amazing how sometimes when we bring ourselves down to somebody else's level, we realize that we really all are on the same level? I think so. Sometimes we judge people by how they act or what they do. But God sees beyond that. He sees their hurt. He sees their pain. He sees the things that probably makes them who they are. It's that way, I reckon. How you feeling? I'm good. Keep up the good work, Mr. Miller. Guys watching.